much as like you're just trying to deal on a daily basis of being completely exhausted and and you know, <laughs> overworked and you know confused about about everything and and really like you know if I would if I would was going to, to analyze every single thing I said and did, I would, have, I would have driven myself crazy. I mean, there's a point where I really just forgot that there were cameras watching me. I, I forgot that anybody was even paying me any mind. And I tried to just entertain myself while I was there, as well as be, you know, I've, I've always been somewhat of a class clown. I'm either like, <laughs> I was either like the teacher's favorite student or their worst nightmare. And it just depended on the class, and it just depended on, on uh, you know, the, the dynamic between me and the personality of, of my teachers and instructors. And, uh, you know, so I was trying to entertain everybody and make everybody laugh in the, in the room, as well as just, you know, keep myself from, from going a little stir-crazy. Because you, you're basically, you're basically in like a, a prison-type situation. <laughs> they, they take your ID away, they take your driver's license, they take your credit card, they take all your money. Yeah, no money, no TV, no newspapers, no okay. communication yeah, with the outside world. No music, no, no music. iPod, no Nothing. books, no uh, magazine, no newspapers. Yeah, the, the music interferes with the sound and recording, so for technical reasons you're not allowed to have, have music happening. And then, you know, it, it comes into play later on in the third season with Keith having having some, some materials, some, some, some design materials and stuff, but it really is about coming onto the show with what you have in your brain and, and not get, getting any kind of extra uh, you know, influences or inspiration from any outsourced material because you know, I, I got so hungry for stimulation that when we were walking to, to Mood to buy fabric, I was checking out people. I'm always checking out people and like seeing what they've got on. But seriously, you start like staring at know, billboards and magazines. You're looking at everything. everything. You're looking for anything that that can influence you because in real life, designers don't work in a vacuum. Designers don't don't create that way. I need constant inspiration. I need to oh, put on another record, put on another song. Like let's let's you know oh let's look at another magazine and whether I spend five minutes on it or an hour on it, or, you know, ripping out pages, things, beautiful images that inspire me. Looking at vintage clothes, looking at, at newness, new, looking at some mistake that like a bag lady walking down the street like put together the most amazing ensemble, you know, like. That, that kind of thing in life is what I'm always trying to take snapshots of in order to, to you know, just work it into to my design aesthetic and things that, that make me light up and I know that I could incorporate them somehow and, and make them something for the future. So um, working in a vacuum on Project Runway, that, that part, it's really hard to get across on television, just how how burdensome that is of working in that, that type of situation. So um, and then there's that, and there's also I think um, one of the big elements with these shows in particular is that yeah you're in this sort of prison environment, but then you're all in it together. So you, there's this natural tendency for humans to want to bond when they're in captivity together. And, uh, <laughs> you know that's one of the things you have to battle with. Like after the fifth or sixth day, I had to put away the pictures of my son. Because you know you get terribly homesick really fast, you know, you, and you want to be friends with these people that you know you just there's no point in being their friends, you know. Their moms are going to come and set you up. <laughs> uh, like any situation, you know, I I went on the show thinking that like, wow, I'm going to meet a lot of like-minded individuals. You know, there's there's a lot of creativity in this room. But you know, like anything, you you go through life and. There's people that you gravitate towards and who gravitate towards you and that you become friends with and there's other people that you know you, that you don't and so it, it's um, you know sometimes you know people are maybe a little shocked with the fact that I, I really am only still friends with Andre. <laughs> you know, can I tell you you know the, the whole the crying bit and like you know that. <laughs> A lot of a lot of ways that he was portrayed on the show, you know, that is a part of him. That there's there's definitely a, a, a you know a complex sensitivity in in Andre. But what you see is what you get, and I love people like that. And and whether you know it's you know 
whatever walk of life they're, they're from. You know, people that that you know say what they mean and they, they express themselves and they they're they're just true, you know, hundred percent through and through. Those are the people that, that I love to be around. And um, he was he was one of those people and I really feel fortunate during my season to to get to become better friends with him. I've 